Hello everyone and welcome to Zabbix series. My name is Artur Slontons and I'm a technical marketing engineer at Zabbix. And today we will be talking about reacting to our problems by creating actions with action conditions and action operations. Specifically, we will forward our problem alerts to our mailbox and also integrate Zabbix with Slack by using the out of the box Zabbix webhooks. So let's see how that can be done. Before we can take a look at our actions, let's first talk about prerequisites required for the actions to work. First, let's take a look at media types under administration, media types over here, and we can see a list of different media types where we can receive our alerts from Discord to Jira, Service Desk, PagerDuty, and also Slack if I scroll down over here that we're going to be using in one of our practical tasks today. And also, of course, basic media types such as email in plain text and email in HTML. Each media type needs to be configured for your specific instance of the tool that you're using. In case of email, it's the SMTP server. So I'm using Gmail SMTP server for my examples. And then we need to provide message templates for our media types. So over here, I can see I have five message templates react to different kinds of problem states to network discovery and auto registration. And if I click add over here, I can see that I can also provide message templates for service state changes if I'm doing business service monitoring and also react on internal problem and internal problem recovery messages. And of course I can edit the message template and the message template subject itself. I'm free to use plain text and macros or I can just use the default message templates. So once we have configured our message templates, Let's move to user permissions. Click on administration users, right? And for example, let's look at the support team manager over here. So first off, we will have to provide a role for our support team manager or whatever user that we're using. So user type super admin will always have access to everything permission wise, all hosts, all templates, no restrictions, but I'm using the user type admin over here. I have maybe restricted it a bit the access to UI elements, API calls, and so on. But also what's important is the user group to which this user belongs to, right? So user group actually defines which hosts this user has permissions to access. So if I navigate to administration user groups over here, and I will open support team user group, I can see in the permissions tag that users belonging to the support team user group have read write access to Linux servers and Windows servers. So to receive access on hosts belonging to a particular host group and each host belongs to at least a single host group, I need to have at least read access on that host group, right? So since this user has read write access to Linux servers and Windows servers, that means we can receive alerts related to Linux servers hosts and Windows servers hosts, hosts belonging to this host group. I can also change it to read, that will also work fine. Super admins are exempt from this logic. They can always receive alerts about everything. They don't need explicit permissions. They by default will have read write on everything and that cannot really be modified. That's why they are super admins. Another thing that we mustn't forget is the media assigned for the user. So let's navigate back to administration users. Let's find our support team manager. And then under the media, we can see that I have assigned an email media, the email endpoint that this user will receive their alerts on. So we need to provide this, this media. If we're using email, we'll provide the media of type email. If we're using Slack, this user will probably be a Slack user that will be pushing the alerts and the same applies for every other media type. And then we also need to provide the when active time period. So at which time periods is this media going to be receiving alerts and also the severities for which the alerts will be sent to this media. So this is extremely important. If you don't provide a media to your user, they will not receive alerts on that media. Or if you have no media at all, they won't receive any alerts. And now we have configured our media types, we have configured our users. So let's move to actions. Navigate to configuration actions. And today we'll focus on trigger actions. I have some predefined actions. Some of them are simple, some of them are complex. So let's take a look at the first action over here. 
Linux application server error in logs. This will be quite simple. So first things first, we need to define our conditions. We can use and or logic. If you have selected the type of calculation and slash or Zabbix will automatically try and detect the most sort of logical behavior of these here expressions. In this case, it has decided A and B. So trigger name contains error in application log and host group equals Linux servers. But we can explicitly use either and or or logic or write our own custom and or expression, right? In this case, we can use and, for example, this would make the most sense over here. As for the conditions themselves, we have plenty of those for trigger actions. We can react on a specific trigger, on a trigger name, trigger severity, hosts, host groups, problem suppression state, tags, templates, and time periods. So we are flexible to define a set of and or rules over here. And if these are evaluated as true, then we move to operations. And this is where the magic happens. So this is a simple operation. This is extremely simple. We will immediately send a message to our admin user via email. If I click edit here, I can see send only to email media type for user admin. And that's pretty much it. I could specify either users or user groups over here if I wish. I have selected a user explicitly. And this operation takes a single step. It lasts from step one to step one. And since this is a single step operation, the duration doesn't really matter over here. It gets executed immediately. Next up, let's look at the second action, which has the same conditions, but the operation logic is a bit more finicky and complex. So you can see over here, I have two steps over here. I have step one and step two, right? In the first step, my operation will immediately send an email to Zabbix admin, right? Same as before, only this time it will use whatever media is assigned to admin and it will send the message based on the message template to all of those media types. And then since the duration is 15 minutes over here, since the duration is 15 minutes, the second step, this will be step from two to two, it will then send a message to support team manager only via email. So if the problem isn't resolved in 15 minutes, an email will be sent to our support team manager. So this is based on the duration of your previous step. Since the duration of the previous step is 15 minutes, the email will be sent after 15 minutes to the support team manager. If a problem is resolved between these two steps, then of course the support team manager will not receive an email. We can also see we have a recovery operation. The admin user will receive a recovery message via all media types assigned to them. And also if the problem is updated, for example, acknowledged, they will also receive a message via all media types assigned to them. Then what if we wish to delay this? What if instead of reacting immediately, we wish to delay this? So let's clean this maybe up a bit. Let's start from scratch. So I wish to send a message to admin, let's say 20 minutes after the problem has started because maybe it has a tendency to resolve itself. So let's add an operation. Let's add a user, let's say admin in our case, right? Let's send only to email. And step one, one. If we use step one, one, so a single step operation, the operation will start immediately. So that's not what we want. What we want to do is start from a second or a third or a fourth or whatever step just not the first one. So let's say steps two, two, from two to two, update this, right? And now we can see that the operation will start only in an hour. Why one hour? Because we are using default step duration for this kind of logic. So if we change the default step duration to 20 minutes, then the second step is going to start 20 minutes in. That means we will react to this problem after 20 minutes, if it hasn't been resolved in 20 minutes. If we, for example, use steps three, three, that will be 40 minutes. 
right? Four from four to four, that will be one hour. And so on. And this way we can actually combine the number of steps and the default step duration to achieve what we wish to achieve. I will move this back to from step two to step two, like so. And also I will add step three, three, and I will send an alert to my support team manager via email if within 40 minutes my problem is still not resolved. Why 40 minutes? Once again, it's based on the duration of the previous step. All right, so this step uses the default step duration. Zero means use default. Default step duration is 20 minutes, but I can set this, for example, to 40 minutes. That means that the third step will start one hour in. So step one, which is invisible, takes 20 minutes. Step two starts in 20 minutes, but takes 40 minutes. And step three starts after an hour if a problem still hasn't been resolved. All right, our third action. So our third action over here contains scripted logic. So we are analyzing a Windows host. We are checking if some service, in my case, print spooler has been stopped, and then we automatically start it again. So in our conditions, we are checking for a trigger that contains the name print spooler on Windows servers hosts, and in our operations. So this is a bit more complex already, we can see it. So steps from one to five, they run a script, restart print spooler on the current host. We can open this up and we can see operation is restart print spooler on the current host. So wherever the service has stopped and this script is executed by the agent. So if I navigate to administration script over here, I can see that I have created a script here, restart print spooler, right? You can use the create script button here. I will open my restart print spooler scripts and we can take a look at it. So it's a very simple script. We can use webhook scripts here, scripts, SSH, telnet, and IPMI scripts. If I have selected the type script, then I can define where it is executed on the Zabbix agent, on either the server or the proxy, depending which component monitors the problematic host, or always on Zabbix server. I'm using Zabbix agent deployed on my Windows host to execute this here simple script, net start print spooler. And this restarts or attempts to restart the print spooler five times. So if after five times, based on the duration, which is two minutes over here, step duration, two minutes of this here, restart print spooler operation. If after 10 minutes, the service is still down, we weren't able to successfully start it up. We then send a message to admin via email and then wait for 30 minutes. That's the duration over here. And then send a message to support team manager 40 minutes in. And that's our workflow. One thing to consider with agent level scripts that we are running under the hood, they actually run system.run items with the no wait parameter. And that's why these items need to be allowed in the allow key because system.run by default is denied. So we need to open the agent configuration file, find the allow key parameter, provide the allow key by using wildcards. Over here you can see it. And then restart the agent and it will be able to execute this script as a part of the action operation. So read more about allow keys in our documentation if you're interested in how that works. And you can then define different kinds of scripts and use allow and deny logic, allow list and a deny list to permit the agents to execute different kinds of scripts. Lastly, we have an action that sends our alerts to Slack. So once again, it monitors our Windows servers and Linux servers. So we have a problem on Windows server or problem on a Linux server, we will send a message to Slack. We will also send recovery messages to Slack if a problem is resolved and update messages to Slack if someone, for example, acknowledges or changes the problem severity or does something to update the problem. So this time we can move back to administration media types 
And if I open my Slack media type over here, we can see that it is configured with a token over here that I obtained from Slack. And also I have defined a macro Zabbix URL over here in administration and then general and then macros over here, right? You can see I have Zabbix URL defined over here. And once that is configured, and once we, once you have configured Slack, obtained the token from Slack and configured it here, then we need to open our Slack user or create a Slack user if we haven't done so. Here I have it, Slack, and assign a Slack media to it and send to based on our documentation. You can either provide a channel or a user that will receive the alert. And then we define React on which severities and when in, when is this media active specifically. In my case, it's 24 seven for all severities. And then whenever we have a problem, we can then open our Slack. And here you can see I have received some alerts and the Zabbix URL is used over here to click on the problem like so and open it like this. So there we go. We are receiving problems in Slack successfully. So there's much more to this than what we covered here. There can be a very complex script logic with integrations, delayed messages, emails, and much more. But hopefully this gave you the information and examples that you needed to move onwards and try to implement Zabbix actions in your own environment, be it for simple email messages or something more complex like Slack integrations, automatic remediations with different types of scripts, be it PowerShell, Python, Bash, whatever, or something completely different. Thank you for your attention and interest in these videos, and I will definitely see you next time. Bye.